Hey, yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing awesome out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far. Here to bring the latest on a few things in this morning's video. The first thing we'll break down is your weather for your Thursday. We'll break it down section by section. And uh, we will spend some time on the western U.S., especially the Rockies, where we do have our first significant winter storm of the fall and winter season that will unfold. And in fact, it's already starting right now, but it will really crank up over the next couple of days into our weekend across the higher elevations. Now, you know, places in those uh, lower elevated regions, you know, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot from this. But this is certainly our first big winter storm for the higher elevations so we'll speak on that. We'll spend some time if you do live higher up out west. After we get done doing that, we will give you a brief update on the tropics. But I'll tell you, there's not a whole lot to talk about out there in the tropics. Things have kind of simmered down. The model guidance has, has really downtrended on anything forming out there. But, you know, we will continue to give you an update on that. We will just leave that for the back half of the video until it becomes something that we really need to talk about more Obviously, we start tracking something, and then we will put that back in the beginning of the video. So if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below so I can pray over it. And so others have an opportunity to do so, too. I want to give you guys a quick reminder. This will be my last video until probably Saturday evening, maybe Sunday sometime. And me and my wife are heading out of town tomorrow morning really early in the morning uh, so i will not have a video for friday morning and saturday morning we're just getting away for basically the weekend and uh just having some time together me and her have not taken a trip just me and her together in about four or five years so you know it's always good to do with your significant other for sure so we're going to do that and get away so just a heads up i'll give you guys another reminder on that later today so let's get rocking and rolling here so we'll start out by looking at what's going on weather wise across the entire country currently uh a dominating high pressure across a good portion of the eastern and central u.s which means a lot of sinking air you don't have really a lot of anything as far as precipitation falling out here we do have a low developing um at the edge of this um cold front this is kind of pivoting some rain back into extreme northeast north carolina southeast virginia let me know what's actually hitting the ground if you're tuning in from this area i imagine this is a chilly light rain for sure we do have a little bit of energy trying to surge out of quebec not sure if that'll survive and make it to maine or not uh, but we do have a lot going on out west we have multiple areas of en energy uh, trough is digging down energy associated with this trough and we have a lot of areas of precipitation some of these higher elevations it's already snowing but the cold air is kind of coming in behind uh, this frontal action right here and this will really drop the snow levels allow for snow to fall at lower elevations really low elevations no but lower elevations so this will crank up our first significant winter storm of the fall and winter season but it's definitely chilly i mean look at these temperatures across the central and eastern u.s sorry that icon keeps popping up I'm trying to uh, keep my uh, mouse cursor over here but temperatures are, are quite chilly i mean we're in the mid to even low 30s as far south as like maybe even central mississippi um alabama hey there's a 28 degree reading which that's some higher terrain here in eastern um, oklahoma and western arkansas but still pretty impressive temperatures for mid-october standards this cold front has made it all the way down south of miami and in fact, some buoys out here in the Gulf of Mexico are down to the 60s, which is pretty impressive for mid-October down here. So that's what's going on right now as far as watches, warnings, and advisories. We got a slew of red flag warnings across the middle of the country. It's dry. We need rain. We need rain just about anywhere across the central and eastern U.S., folks. But freeze warnings uh, in this kind of purple color right here. This is stretched across the apps, too, which we don't like to see. You know, there's a lot of areas that are having a lot of people are having to live in tents, it's a, it's a tough situation in the mountains of North Carolina right now. Uh, people without power still, without heat. Um, so uh, thankfully, you know, it, it will warm up over the next few days, but we're going to have some chilly nights even over, over the next few nights and mornings for sure. So I uh, hope you guys are okay out there. Definitely thinking and praying for you folks. But as we move out west, there's a lot of freeze watches, freeze warnings. You got winter storm watches. You got winter storm warnings. Winter storm warnings are showing up in this pink. This is winter storm watches here in the Rockies, the Southern Rockies of Colorado. We even got winter weather advisories in the higher elevations of New Mexico. I'm sorry, Arizona. Winter weather advisories for the mountain ranges here in Wyoming. And we got the same thing in areas of Idaho, 
Montana, and even some winter storm warnings in some of these higher elevated regions. So that's what's going on as far as that. Uh, the chances of excessive rainfall below 5%, so it doesn't even show up on here. And then the risk of severe weather, there really isn't a risk, just a general risk of thunderstorms across the western U.S., just because there's a lot of energy. Could have some rumbles of thunder, maybe a flash of lightning. We'll see if that actually happens, though. As far as weather across the southeast, we'll break this down first. Nothing really going on. We got this low pressure that it's developing, but it's moving away. As we start to get into this evening, maybe some showers kind of get into the Florida Keys, maybe extreme southern Florida. But the rest of the southeast, bright baby blue skies um, and just nothing going on. Very dry, high pressure in place, and you typically don't get a whole lot of weather as far as precipitation-wise when high pressure is dominating the area. So, um up into the northeast, quiet. There's that low pressure off the coastline. This will not impact the U.S. I have to watch our friends here in Atlantic Canada, but this even looks to kind of move just more west to east and not even do much for you folks. But the next 24 hours in the northeast, beautiful weather, quiet weather. Ain't a whole lot to really break down for you folks. The south central U.S., maybe some shower activity, maybe some storms for extreme southern areas of Texas. We do have the energy kind of riding ahead of this frontal boundary, some southerly flow across, area, I'm sorry, New Mexico, Colorado. Some of this will mix with some snow, but this isn't really the main event that's coming in the next couple of days. But we could get some thunderstorms across areas in New Mexico, heck, maybe even Colorado, some heavier areas of rain we get into this evening. That energy will try to make it to western Texas where we could certainly use the rain. Western Oklahoma, Kansas needs the rain, but it looks like it dries out and then our next big system starts to move in. So quiet weather for the most part. Could wake up to some shower activity in the far western counties of Texas tomorrow morning. And then the north central U.S., it's also quiet. You know, just just quiet weather. Um, we got some energy that begins to move into the high plains of the western Dakotas, uh, western Nebraska, rain falling out here as we're um, getting into our evening and then we get into the overnight hours. Some of that energy could make it all the way to, say, you know, Eastern North Dakota could start to mix with a little bit of snow tomorrow morning in the Black Hills of uh, South Dakota. Um, maybe a little wintry mix, maybe a little rain snow mix. We'll see about that. Now let's move out west. Uh, so we're, we're going to obviously talk about the weather for today, but we're going to extend this into our part of our weekend too. So this morning we got energy moving across the Rockies. We got cold air following and we got rounds of precipitation even after the main round. So as we're getting into this afternoon, you see the snow falling across Idaho, the higher elevations of Montana. We got rain switching to snow in like the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. The Wasatch Mountains is beginning to turn to heavy snow. The Rockies of um, Colorado, uh, heavy snow beginning to fall in northern Nevada. Um, and then just the, the higher elevations of extreme southern Idaho. Cold air continues to move in at this kind of upper low, begins to get pinched off, becomes a cutoff low, and then this thing will spin right over the central sections of the Rockies. By the time I'm waking up tomorrow morning, an all-out winter storm is cranking across the higher elevations. I think lower elevations like Salt Lake City will stay mainly rain. Um, typically don't get a lot of snow in that area um, this time of the year, but that can change once you get a little bit deeper into fall and winter. But uh, you know, waking up tomorrow morning to a, a, a pretty heavy area of precipitation over the central Rockies. Uh, Wyoming, even eastern Idaho, a little bit of snow still falling in southern Montana, but especially Utah. And then we're going to move into our Friday afternoon, still snowing. Snowing across like maybe even the Laramie Range, we'll see. A little bit of snow falling in the Black Hills. Um, snow is beginning to fall in the Rockies of Colorado, and it begin, begins to get really heavy in this area. We have winter storm watches right now here. In the, uh, you know, I, I'm, one of these days, I'm going to have every single individual mountain range memorized uh, for the Rockies so we can really talk in detail. But stay with me. I actually have maps pulled up for these areas that should help you guys locally that are tuning in, which I imagine isn't a lot out west, um, that should help you as far as how much snow maybe your area can get if you do live in those higher elevator regions. But we're moving into Friday afternoon, evening. I mean, an all-out winter storm in the higher elevations. And, I mean, it is interesting. It's trying to switch it to snow, even in, like, Laramie, for example. Um, Casper, do you try to switch to snow? And then as we're getting into, like, tomorrow night, 
uh, first big winter storm, snowstorm of uh, the fall season, really cranking up across the higher elevations of Colorado. Heck, even the northern sections and the higher elevations of New Mexico. So interesting stuff. You know, we'll only just go out 48 hours, but this continues even deeper into our weekend. And this is snowfall between now and Saturday evening, this coming Saturday evening. And, of course, you can see where, you know, it's really pinpointing the higher elevations. There's the Bighorn Mountains right here. There's the Wasatch Mountains, you know, just the Rockies of Colorado. And just uh, really, obviously, just pinpoints those higher elevated regions. But, you know, we go on and zoom into these areas. And I know this is kind of almost glitchy on your screen here, but this is Idaho and areas of Montana. Uh, if you're tuning in, let me know and you see your area um, on your screen. But this is a snowfall map between now. This is snowfall between now and uh, actually just 6 a.m., which it should cut off by then. 6 a.m. local time um, Friday. Uh, this is snowfall for Montana between now and 6 a.m. Saturday local time. So, you know, going for several inches of snow. There's the Bighorn Mountains right here, which I know there's no highly populated communities in the higher elevations. But, you know, Red Lodge going for three to four inches of snow. Living, Livingston, an inch. Gardner, inch and a half or so. So uh, we're starting to move into Utah. The Wasatch Mountains going to get, I mean, maybe one to two feet of snow. Kings Peak going for 20, over two feet of snow. Uh, Salt Lake City, not going for anything. Provo, same thing. Evanston might be high enough up to get three to six inches. And here's some areas further south in Utah down here, if you're tuning in from Utah. There's just isolated mountain ranges here. And this is between now and 6 a.m. Saturday. Now, we do move to back to Wyoming. And... Um, not sure what range this is. Is this the Laramie range? I think that's further this way. You guys, I'm sure, will correct me. But, I mean, obviously in the higher elevations of Yellowstone National Park, for example, you know, you guys are going to get a lot of snow. Bighorn Mountains here. Here's the valley, a valley right here. R Riverton, maybe an inch or less. And this is between now and 7, 6 a.m. Sunday. South Pass City, 4 to 6 inches of snow. Um, Jeffrey City, 4 to 6 inches. Casper, 1 to 2 inches of snow. Um, Waltman, three to four. So uh, we continue to move down to Colorado. Now, as of now, there's been some teases and model guidance that show different. But as of now, between now and 6 a.m. Sunday, Denver, not calling for anything. Boulder, not calling for anything. You start getting to the foothills, maybe a couple inches. Uh, Colorado Springs, nothing. Check out Silverton down here, 12 to 18 inches. Aspen, I'm sorry, Aspen, maybe a little bit of snow. Fair play, three to four. So, like I said, this is really elevation driven um, for sure. Uh, but, you know, which is, you know, once we start getting in October, guys, we can definitely get some winter storms in Denver in November. And uh, your snowiest month is actually March, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but, you know, they just do things, you know, different back out there, that's for sure. Um, but that's an update on the winter storm. Hopefully, that helps some of you folks out here. But as far as temperatures a day, beautiful fall like air mass dominating. The eastern and central U.S., once again, chilly in the northeast. I mean, it barely hit 60 degrees here yesterday with bright sunshine in central South Carolina. That's pretty impressive for this area of the country in mid-October. But, I mean, look at Florida, folks. I mean, there'll be a couple areas that does get that do get into the 80s, but, I mean, for the most part, this is beautiful for October standards. So, nice air mass in place, the western U.S. We're going to get some warming ahead of this system, so it's going to climb in well into the 80s across the high plains, uh, warm across the southwest, but nothing crazy. Cold front has moved through the valley of California, Sacramento Valley. So, I mean, nice conditions, even in those lower elevations. And, of course, it is cooling down ahead of this winter storm and this storm system just in general across the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. An update on the tropics. Man, we're rolling through this video fast. Um, update on the tropics. Um, we're still watching 94L. Just... Literally, I mean, you can really see it well on the map now because there's not really there's not really anything around it. Uh, but that is our tropical wave we are still watching. Model guides that did not up uptick since the morning since the morning video yesterday. Still watching a bunch of unsettled weather down here. But you know, it's crazy. You go about five, six days ago, the GFS was showing, you know, a high end hurricane right here. But since then things have calmed down. The bias really flexed, meaning the GFS has a really bad 
biased of showing uh, very, very strong hurricanes deep in the Caribbean, especially this time of the year. So it definitely was off its rocks. We're going to continue to watch this as this moves in general this direction, see if it develops. But, um, you know, update from the National Hurricane Center. Like we thought, you know, this has dropped to a 30% chance. It was as high as a 60% chance at one time, not too long ago either, like just 36 hours ago. So only has a 30% chance to develop now. Uh, that's good news. Uh, the drop tropics are really starting to simmer down. Not saying they won't per perk up again. That's not what I'm saying. But for now, thank the good Lord, things are things are calming down. So, um, uh, the GFS. I will just show you the GFS run. You know, we'll start Sunday morning. Nothing going on. You know, we take it to about midweek next work week. Nothing going on. We take it into Friday morning next week. Nothing really going on. Um. And when we go about 10 days out and there's no tropical activity. And really, this is the only area you need to focus on because out in the tropical Atlantic, once you get deep into October, things pretty much shut down. Uh, you know, the, the, the MDR season, main development region shuts down. And it really wasn't an active one. We had some weird, we had barrel, which was very odd, but we never had one of those, I would say, full cross ocean crossing <laughs> Uh, tropical systems like we really thought we were this hurricane season so things have calmed down not saying hurricane season over you know that's not what i'm saying guys but um anyways that's about it folks um like i said no video over the next couple mornings getting away with my wife we're really looking forward to it very really excited about it um but i do want to mention one thing i was seeing and, and guys you know i like to go on my little somebody in the comments said side story mitch that, that, that sounds about right but um Hey guys, if you're a new viewer, you're tuning in, um, uh, you're not too familiar with my channel, I'm a big winter weather fan. Big winter weather fan. I love it. It's the most, it's, it's, it's the form of weather I love talking about the most. And I, I made a post yesterday on social media that basically says uh, the Carolinas are due for a winter storm. Uh, we're going to throw a, a Carolina sized pizza party uh, when we finally reel in a winter storm. Uh, this season that's not Mitch calling for a winter storm that's Mitch uh, wish casting for a winter storm this season and it's Georgia too you know Georgia areas of Virginia has been left out um, but you know yeah I had about 10 comments that said that were almost angry with me <laughs> that were just basically like the last thing we need now is a winter storm in North Carolina uh, people uh, you know, weren't necessarily accusing me or anything but you could tell that they were irritated and annoyed by my post because um, I guess they viewed it as me actively um, wishing for a winter storm. Um, but I'll, I'll leave it at this because I know I'm going to get comments like this on my YouTube channel too when we're breaking down winter weather and you guys can sense my excitement. Um, guys, I'm never going to stop loving winter weather. Um, it, it's, it's just, I just love it. Am I going to, and just because I love winter weather, that doesn't mean that I'm actively hoping that the places that were hit the hardest with Hurricane Helene, which is where I'm getting at, um, there's a lot of people from North Carolina and stuff saying this is the last thing we need with, you know, the power outages, lack of heat, people are living in tents, it's an awful situation. But just because I, I enjoy winter weather does not mean that I'm hoping that two feet of snow falls on the worst struck in areas that Helene hit. Um, it's, you know, people just... That's just how people are, man. It's 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 very odd, uh, but you know I love winter weather, guys, and I think I think that's why a lot of people tune in during the winter time is because they enjoy it themselves. So um, I'm definitely biased towards more winter weather. Yeah, that's just the way that you know my channel is. I live in the south, but you know you would think that um, I would live in the north or something as much as I. Uh, talk about it and stuff like that but i just want to get that on out and i know the comments are going to come regardless when we're breaking down a winter system like mitch why are you getting excited about this it's the last thing we need well i love winter weather doesn't mean that i'm hoping for the worst case uh, to happen for the worst struck in areas so i just want to get on get that on out of here i probably will have to bring it up again but the side story mitch there for you but god bless all y'all hope y'all have a wonderful day and um yeah, appreciate the prayers throughout the week with the YouTube situation. Uh, means the world, and we'll get through it. We'll get through it. So I'll give you an update when I have one on that, but I'll probably do it off the video and uh, do it that way. God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful day. Appreciate y'all, and I'll talk to you again in a couple days. God bless.